Hey guys, this is a Peacekeeper task guide for samples. For this task, you do have to find seven different stims in raid and then hand them over to Peacekeeper. And these stims are going to be a Mule, an Obdobos, a Meldonin, an AHF-1M, a P-22, an L-1, and also a 3BTG. Now this task is considered one of the more difficult tasks and one that people do tend to be completely stuck on for majority of the wipe. And even though the task is only to find stims, the issue is that some of these stims do have such a limited spawn that unless luck is on your side, that you will just never end up seeing some of the ones that are required to actually complete this task. Now I will firstly tell you guys about the guaranteed ways that you can find some of these stims, and then we will move on to the possible ways that you can find every single one of the seven that are required for this task, and then we will break down the more specific ways for each certain stim afterwards. That way you can skip to that part of the guide if you are looking for a specific stim. Now, as for the guaranteed ways that you can get your hands on some of these, you can actually get three of these stims as quest rewards, being the P-22 for completing Colleagues Part 2, as well as a Meldon and L1 for completing the Colleagues Part 3 task, and then an L1 can also be obtained as a reward for completing the Pets Vote Needed Part 2 task. Now, another guaranteed way that you can get your hands on one of these stims is that the Mule stim can be crafted in the Med Station Level 2 after completing the task Crisis. However, this is more than likely going to be completely useless to you since you do only get access to Crisis at level 48 and it is also a very tedious task to complete. It does require you to hand over several different medical items found in Raid, including two Ledexes, among other things. Now, one of the first things that I do recommend that you guys decide is whether or not you do want to complete the Colleagues Part 3 task or if you would rather complete the Jagger task, the Huntsman Pass Sadist, because Colleagues Part 3 does actually require you to also hand over two of the more difficult stims that you can find in the game, being the 3 BTG as well as the AHF-1. But for Colleagues Part 3, you actually cannot kill Sanitar or else you will fail and lose access to that task and not be able to get the black card that is offered as a reward. So what I actually recommend doing is to prioritize and complete the Colleagues Part 3 task over samples because that task will prevent you from being able to eliminate Sanitar until you have handed over the lab's access cards as well as the AHF-1 and the 3BTG. And since these two stims are super rare besides on Santa and his guards or on labs, then by prioritizing colleagues, then you not only get the ability to then kill Sanitar without any penalties again, but you also get a lab's black keycard and then two of the stims required for samples by finishing this task, being the L1 and also the Meldonin. And honestly, with the black card, it will probably fast track you to being able to get this samples task completed as well. Now, another option and a secret tip for you guys is that you actually do not have to accept the Jagger task, the Huntsman Pass Sadist, because once you do accept that task, then the Colleagues Part 3 task will also become active. But since you now have the knowledge already for what you will end up needing for these tasks, then you can leave that task unaccepted and then continue to kill Santar without any penalties. And then just basically go ahead and accumulate all the different stims that you will need and then accept the task once you have everything gathered and then just hand them all in. So now we will move on to all the possible ways that you can find every one of these seven stims with a found in raid status. And it is important to note at this time that med cases are not actually able to spawn any of the stims that are useful to you for this task. The only stim that they can spawn is actually morphine, so don't end up wasting your time looking in these med cases for any of these stims. Even though you would assume that a med case should have stimulants in it, that's just not the case, so I wanted to mention that now. So the actual options for you to find all of your stims are going to be med bags, duffel bags, and 5x2 weapon boxes. And besides this, then you do have Sanitar and his guards, or if you do like to do some raids on labs, then you do have the black room there, as well as the keycard with blue marking, which is Sanitar's office. And then you also do have the med hut, which is a free option for you to check there on labs. And then another very common solution to this task is to try your luck with the scav case, or to try spawning in with one of the stims that you need while playing as your scav character. And then you can also check your daily and weekly task rewards for the possibility of getting a needed stim. Now I figured that I would mention that they hopefully do end up changing the medical supply airdrops back to their items having a found and raid status like it was prior to patch 14. Because if you are lucky enough to get your hands on an airdrop crate without being head eyes by somebody in a bush camping it from 100 meters away and it does happen to be a medical one, then there is the chance that you can have a 3BTG or an AHF1 or any of the other stims that you do need for this task inside of there. And I figured that I would add this in quickly since they could end up changing it back. And if not, then we'll just remember the good old days, I guess. Now, besides those loot containers that I did mention earlier that have the chance to spawn every single one of the stims, then ground caches and buried barrel caches also have the ability to spawn mules, abdobos, meldonins, or L1 stims. But you will not be able to get P22s, 3BTGs, or AHF1s from these loot containers. And then just a quick note is that if you did happen to sell your L1 or use them, then the best place to consistently find this stim is actually going to be from killing and looting Tagila, since he does very frequently spawn with two of them on his character. And now I will show you guys locations on two different maps, being woods and streets, for the possibility of Abdobos and Meldonin spawns. And then I will also show you guys some locations on Lighthouse for Abdobos, Meldonin, L1, P22, and Mule spawns. 
So starting with woods, there is going to be two main areas that I have a lot of luck when searching for Abdelbos and Meldon and Stims. And the first one is going to be at the medical camp area at the southern portion of the map. And this area does have several med bags as well as a bunch of loose medical spawns all around the camp. However, usually this area is very contested at the beginning of every raid. So the chance of you actually finding a stim will decrease depending on which spawn that you end up getting. But since there are so many spawns now, as well as with the addition of dynamic loot, then there is always the chance that a spawn was missed. So I will be showing you guys in the background some places that I tend to check when coming to this med camp area. But like I said, with the new dynamic loot spawns, it is impossible for me to tell you where every single spawn is because we literally just don't know them all yet. So it is going to be best for you guys to check all the possible spawns during your own raid. But the typical places that I would check in here are going to be on the left of the front entrance on these shelves. And then the med bags are going to be at the end of this row as well. You will also have some spawns all throughout the makeshift connexes in here on both sides as well as on top of any of these tables all throughout the med camp. You will also have a spawn inside of the open connex that does have all the covered bodies in it. There is a table at the end of this connex where there is a possible loose medical loot spawn. And there can also be a spawn in the back of the ambulances as well. And after I do check all these different places, then I always check at the tent at the back end of the camp. This area has several tables inside and usually there is a med bag on the chair in the back. And in this area, there can be a whole bunch of loose medical loot spawns on the tables and also on this cart. And as you can see, there is an Obdobo sitting on this back left table in front of the med bag chair spawn. There can also now be several different medical supply crates inside of this camp as well. So just be sure to go around and then check all these different wooden boxes and see if they are a medical supply crate or a ration crate or what they are. After finishing here, then the other secondary place on woods that I do make sure to check is going to be a proper little camp, which is going to be in the northwest part of the map up by the convoy. So I am actually going to teleport us up the smaller camp. And once we do head over here, then you will see another tent. But we actually want to go on the right side of this tent where you will see a table with a gurney on it. At this gurney, then you will have several loose medical loot spawns that are going to be on top of the table as well as underneath it. And also some spawns are actually going to be inside the gurney itself. So just make sure that you do hover your mouse over it to make sure that you don't miss any. You can find almost any medical item in the game here, including Ledexes, O-Scopes, and also some of the stims that you need for this task. And this is definitely a location that I check all the time when I am in this area, just because there's high tier loot that's left behind here all the time, because people just don't realize that loot can spawn inside of the gurney as well as underneath the table. So after we've finished searching this area, then we will head down the hill and then in between the two bodies of water just to the right, and we are going to head over towards the convoy. Now this is the same convoy that you had to find for the search mission proper task and once you do get to the actual convoy then you will want to check around these four different covered bodies around here. And when you are looking around the bodies what you are looking for is the loose medical loot spots that can potentially be here which does include the stims that you need for this task. Now depending upon your spawn or extract then there is one additional med bag that you can check that is going to be located at the back of the checkpoint SUV and while you are here I do recommend that you check the driver's seat for the violet keycard spawn and then you can check for the med bag in the back of the SUV. Now in my raid of course the med bag didn't spawn in for me to show you guys and this is going to be all the different areas on woods that I do typically go to to check for this task. So now on the streets, there is just an insane number of places for you to check on this map, so it would be impossible for me to highlight all of them. However, I will go over the most medically dense loot areas that will give you guys that can actually run streets several possible spawns at once. So the first area that I will go over is going to be the three pharmacies on the map, and basically there is going to be one located at each section of the map, which means that when you do spawn in, then you will always be close to one. And they are rarely ever looted, and then the layout of each one is going to be quite similar with a mixture of between four and five med cases and med bags, as well as some medical loose loot are all around these places. And just so that you guys know, these are the same pharmacies that you do have to locate for the pets will need a part two task. Now, another location that is rarely ever looted is inside the dental office of the Pinewood Hotel, and it is on the left side of the first floor of the Pinewood Hotel that runs alongside the Klimoff Street. Now this dental area does have three side rooms that have several different loose medical spawns that include a lot of different stims. So this is definitely a great area to check to make some progress towards your painkiller and samples tasks. And even though nothing spawned in this video for me, then just be aware that this is an offline raid just to show you guys where to go. So the loot pool is definitely going to be a lot worse. And then the last area and the most well-known one will be inside the Lexos compound where there are several different spawns inside of it. And we will go over those now. So entering in from the check 15 side, then there are going to be some loose medical spawns inside the connex on the right and left side of this entrance. And there is also usually a medical case in the left connex as you come in. Now, once we start moving back into the middle of the compound, then you will notice the urban medicine garage. And then you will want to head inside of here. And once you do get in here, then there will be a med bag, a med case, as well as a medical supply crate. And then also a whole bunch of loose medical loot that can spawn all over the place in here. So you definitely want to make sure that you check all the different areas. 
Now, once you come out of this garage, then you do want to head to the right. And then there will actually be a connex that is on the right side across from the aspect building. And it is going to be on the right of the entrance. And once you go into this connex on the right hand side, then there will be a table in here that does have some medical loot spawns and frequently it will spawn stims. And then the last area that you do want to go to is going to be inside of the aspect company office building where we will have a few different spots to check. So as soon as we do open up this door, then you will want to look at the bookshelf that's directly in front of you, as well as on top of the filing cabinet just to the left of the bookshelf. There are several different high value spawns that can be here and they are oftentimes missed. After you do check this area, then you do want to head to the left and then inside the office on your right hand side and inside of here is a potential stim spawn along every single shelf that is inside of this room. And this is definitely a great place to check for your painkiller and also for your samples task because I find stims in here all the time. After we check here, then you do want to head back out to the entryway that we came in and then open up the door on the opposite side. Inside of this room, then there will be three different high value spawns on each one of the tables that are directly in front of you and then to the left. And then you will also have a med case on the far left side, as well as some loose medical loot on the table around it. And definitely make sure that you hover your mouse over top of this because that loot can actually hide underneath of the debris on the table. And just to add on to this, then there is actually a high value medical spawn that's not far from here in the first floor of the Concordia building just behind the desk. And it is just off to the right corner of this Lexus compound. However, to get there, then you will have to maneuver around the mine. So just make sure that you are conscientious of that as you are trying to go over there, or you can just leave it and then go and extract with all the loot that you just found. So here's a map of Lighthouse, and this map is going to be your best bet when it does come to finding yourself some of these stims that you need, especially a mule stim, but also an L1 of Delbos, P22, and Maldonan. And the route that I am going to show you guys will be as though we are spawning by the downed helicopter or the southern road extract and moving towards the water treatment plant area of the map. So you guys can obviously adjust or reverse this map based upon your own spawn and you will also notice that I didn't include any of the water treatment plant spawns and that's because the goal of this route is to be viable for all players regardless of their skill level so that you don't have to clear all the rogues in order to be able to do this and also for it to be relatively quick so that you can run it a few times a night even if you are a casual player especially if you don't have too long to play. So I'll let you guys know up front that to maximize this route and your chances of actually finding some of these stims that you are going to need for keys for lighthouse. The keys are going to be the hillside house key, the Marin car trunk key, as well as the USEC first and second safe keys. These keys are absolutely optional and honestly not very expensive usually. So you can typically get all four of the keys for under 50,000 each, so less than 200k total. However, the prices will definitely be inflated and fluctuate a little bit at the beginning of wipes. And honestly, you would be able to make your money back from each one of these keys, potentially just from one run, since each one of these keys does have 40 uses also, then you will definitely end up making a ton of money versus what you ended up spending on the key. However, if you do decide not to bother picking up these keys, then you will still have a good chance to be able to get the stims that you're looking for, but just ignore the parts of the video where I am talking about these four specific areas. So we're here on Lighthouse by the downed helicopter, which is just down the road from the Brown Chalet. And then the first spawn that I will show you guys is going to be here on the chair on top of this mountain that overlooks the smoking helicopter. And once you do check this spawn on the chair seat and then also beside it, then you can start to head up the road towards the Brown Chalet, which is going to have the most potential spawns and also the best chance for you to actually find the items that you're looking for. However, with that in mind, this area is going to be the riskiest that you will go to just because it is a hotspot for PMCs as well as player scavs due to the amount of loot that is inside of this small area, as well as there being a couple of different tasks that are located here. So once you do get in front of the Brown Chalet, then the first area that I usually go into is inside of the garage. And inside of here, then you will have three spawns to check. And the first two will be on the left desk as well as the left tool cabinet. And then the third spawn is going to be just beside the Jeep at the base of the tool cabinet here on the garage floor. Now, after you check these spots, then you want to go in through the door to the mudroom slash laundry room and in here on the right hand side, then there are going to be some shelves that will have multiple spawns on each of the bottom two rows on either side. So make sure that you do check all these four compartments because people definitely miss these spawns all the time. After that, then you do want to go into the main area to the large wooden table, and then you will have a spawn on the close right corner right in front of you, as well as one on the chair that is in front of the laptop. And after checking here, then we will be heading up the stairs to the billiard room where there will be several spawns up here for you to check. The first one will be on the TV console in the bottom shelf in the center, and then you will also have potential spawns on all these stands that are around the perimeter of the room, as well as on the beanbag chairs and also on top of the boxes, and also on top of the pool table itself. After we do check finishing here, then you want to head all the way down the stairs to the gym area that leads out to the deck and the pool. Once you get to the pool, then you do want to take a left and then head towards the wooden pallets that are stacked oddly at the corner of the building, and then behind these, then you will see a broken box with a potential high value spawn in here. After you do check here, then you want to go back out to the pool and then past the gym. And then on the right hand side, then there will be the hot tub area where there is a floating covered body inside of the hot tub. 
and then inside of this area then there is going to be a potential spawn on the shoulder of this body sometimes you may have to drop down onto the body and then float your mouse over top of it to see the potential spawn as well and after you have checked this body then you want to head back out to the deck and then you want to check all three of these patio chairs that are here as there can be stims as well as good ammo that spawns on each one of these three after you check here, then you do want to turn right around and then head up the stairs. And if you veer a little bit to the left at the top of this staircase, then you will have two wooden crates that will be in front of you. And then you want to check on top of the left crate as well as on the ground in front of these two crates for potential high value spawns. These are going to be the final spawns that I personally check for when I am at the Brown Chalet. Now, after checking the entirety of the Brown Chalet while you are doing these runs, then you will have three options to choose from at this point. You can either continue to follow along the path that I'm going to show you guys, or if you didn't end up finding an item that you really need for a task, then you can always turn around and then head towards the Southern Road Extract to reset. Or if you do have a Red Rebel and Paracord, then you can always take the Mountain Pass Red Rebel Extract, which is going to be to the right from the Brown Chalet, just over in the far corner here. This will end up giving you a much safer way to extract from the map rather than attempting to make it past the Blue Chalet and then also the next village to get to the Patch of Shoreline Extract. And honestly, I figured I would just bring up the Mountain Pass Extract as an option for you guys since I never see anyone mention the Paracord Extract on this map to people in other guides. So now moving on to the Blue Resort portion of this guide, as you do come over this hill, then just be aware that this area is a potential spawn for the goons. So if you do start to get shot by a bunch of sustained, unsuppressed fire, and you do hear the footsteps followed by the voice lines, and then you end up getting pushed very aggressively, then it could very well be them. So I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of that. But if they aren't here, then you do want to head for the inside of the Blue Chalet. But before you do enter inside of here, then you do want to check the broken box just outside the building. Because remember, any of these broken boxes do have the chance to have a rare spawn inside of it, including stims. Now, once you do enter into the chalet, then there will be a bar on your left. And behind the bar, then there can be a potential valuable spawn. After you do check here, then you do want to go into the first room on your left, which is another sauna room. And inside of this room, then there is going to be a gurney. And then there can be loose medical loot that spawns all around the gurney. After you have checked here, then you do want to head out to the main area of the building. And if you have brought your USEC first or second safe keys or both of them, then this is where you can check the two lock safes upstairs since they both have a rare loot spawn chance. So the safes are located up on the top floor to the right and also one to the left of the staircase. And these safes are definitely hit or miss since most of the time when I do open them up, then they are completely empty. However, there has been a couple of different raids where I have definitely gotten lucky and found an item that I needed and not only stims, but it is also a good option for vertexes if you do still need those for lend -Lease part two. So if you are in the area and you do have the keys and it is safe to loot them, then it can definitely be worth looting. Now, after we have finished checking all the areas inside of the blue chalet, then we will head over towards the pizza shack in order to check on top of all the chairs in this building, since they all do have a rare loot spawn chance. And after finishing looking inside the pizza hut, then I will jump over the fence and then head down the mountain towards the main road in order to cross over to check the Marin car. Now, like I mentioned, this is going to be optional depending on if you do have the key and also if you did want to take the added risk of crossing over the road. And if you do decide to check Marin, then I recommend using pain meds to cross over just in case and also crossing over in between the bus and the truck just so that you are far enough away that you don't trigger the rogues to shoot you with the grenade launcher. Now this Marin cart is another area that can be totally hit or miss. Sometimes you will open it up and it will be completely empty and then other times you will open it up and then you get two or three high tier items. So basically if I can make my way over to it safely by clearing the pride rock as well as making sure that I have pain meds on board then I usually will try to make my way over in order to check the car just in case. And I do actually pull mule stems from the Marin car all the time. And also another tip is that if your Marin car is empty after you open it, then just make sure that you quickly check underneath the trunk of the car, because I have seen items phase through the trunk and be sitting on the pavement beneath it before. Now, after checking the Marin car, then you are going to cross back over and head into the village where the first building that we are going to check is going to be inside the hillside house. So if you do have this key, then we will have five spawns to check inside of here. And the first one that we are going to check will be underneath the broken TV and underneath the stand by the books. The next one will be in the bottom of the bedside table next to the bed. And then the third one will be underneath the bed itself. Then inside of the kitchen room, then you will want to check on top of the chair underneath the cloth, as well as inside of the sink in this room on the left hand side of this house. The hillside house has been pretty cracked for people so far this wipe, so it may have gotten a secret buff, but definitely it seems to be worth it so far especially if you are able to get it for a decent price. Plus this key can usually pay for itself in one run, especially if you do find a Bitcoin, which I am hearing is fairly common so far this wipe. Now, after we finish looting the hillside house, then we will head over towards the path to shoreline. But on the way there, then there is going to be one more house that has a couple of high tier spawns for us to check. So the house that we are going to check is going to be the last one on the left as we are heading over towards the extract. Inside of this house, then we will want to check on top of the bed in the first room. And there is also actually a chance for an intelligence folder spawn in the bedside table as well. So just make sure that you keep an eye out for that. 
And then in the next room, then you can have a valuable spawn inside of the sink. And basically after you've checked this sink, then this will be the last spawn for us to check for this route. And essentially then you can just head towards the path to shoreline extract and then you can rinse and repeat this run because it is essentially a relatively quick and efficient way to check for especially the mule stim but also for the meldon and obdelbos p22 and l1 stims that can spawn on this map especially if you can get the keys for a decent price and obviously your risk will be dependent upon your spawns and also how many players have spawned into the map as well but in terms of the efficiency this route is going to be one that is quite good and possibly even the best way to do it other than labs. Plus you will also have lots of opportunity to get other high tier items for other tasks, especially ones that require high tier tech loot. And even though there are a bunch of spawns inside the water treatment plant, then that would definitely extend your raid time and also it would put you at a much higher risk of dying due to the rogues being completely broken this wipe and also all the PMCs and player scavs rush in this area for tasks and also just for their loot. So typically, if I found anything useful or that I needed, then I would just try to avoid all that chaos and then just go and extract and reset the raid. And now for the two stims that are probably going to hold majority of you guys up for this task, being the AHF-1 and also the 3BTG. These are quite rare, really only have a couple of potential spawns in the game. And the first of these potential ways to get this stim that I will talk about is that they can actually spawn in on your scav when you do load into a scav raid. And apparently this is how majority of people have been getting their hands on these stims this wipe. Although this is completely RNG, so for people like myself, I may end up getting one of the stims in this way, but I would never end up getting them both. But the more that you do end up running your scav, then the higher that your scav rep will end up being, and then also the better that your chance will be to have higher tier loot as you spawn in, such as these two stims. So one way to do this is that if you do in and out factory a lot to try and raise your scav rep, then this may end up working for you. Now the second option if you do have your hideout built up enough is that your scav case is also another viable option for you to potentially get these stims. This is another RNG wheel spin, but I do actually recommend running moonshine cases and hoping that the drunken scavs will bring you back one of these two stims while you are also out and actively searching in your own raids for them. And you do have a higher chance of getting task related items if you do give them moonshine, so that's why I do recommend that over the intelligence folder option since the intel will give you a higher probability of keys and intel items, but you can still actually get these stims from there too. And you can also get the stims you need from a 95k scav case as well since the loot pool for that is going to be completely wide open. So technically you can get any item in the game by using the 95k case. It is just a much lower probability it seems than the moonshine for these stims. Now another option is to always check what your daily and weekly task rewards are since it is possible to get some pretty wild rewards including any of the stims needed for samples. And then the next method is probably going to be your best option to get these stims other than going to labs and it is actually from Sanitar and his guards. Now if you have Colleagues Part 3 active and you do want to complete it, then obviously killing Sanitar is not going to be an option for you, but that doesn't mean that you can't take out his guards and then have a friend kill Sanitar. However, this is a risky option because if your friend ends up dying or you end up being backed into a corner by Sanitar, then you will have to make a decision to either kill him or to try and run away and hope that he doesn't pick you off or chase you down. Or if you are a solo player, then you do have a couple of options. You can try to pick off Sanitar's guards and then leave him alone. Or you can also try and third party another PMC after they do take out Sanitar and then eliminate the PMC and any remaining guards before they end up having a chance to swipe all the stims into their injector case. But if you are a solo player, then it can definitely be near impossible to pick off the guards in an area where you can loot them safely from Sanitar pushing and lasering you. So it would definitely be easier if you have completed Colleagues Part 3 and then you won't have to worry about avoiding or potentially killing Sanitar at all. If that's the case, then you can just go in and bulldoze over top of Sani and his guards and then loot up. And for reference, I was actually able to get every single stim for samples in one raid off of Santar and his guards. So that's why I end up recommending completing Colleagues Part 3 before samples. And then the last three options that I will talk about to find these stims is going to be on labs. And these three areas are going to be your best bet since this is where stims tend to spawn the most frequently. And then the first location is going to be inside of Sanitar's office on labs across from the green keycard room, which requires the keycard with blue markings. This keycard does commonly spawn on Sanitar, but also can be obtained from your scav case or also from the flea market, typically selling for around 350 to 400 K. And inside of this room, then you do have several different stim spawns as well as other medical supplies. This room is a nice option to have since typically it isn't looted. However, it is only a single use key card for about 350k. But for the fact that it does have the potential for about 10 stim spawns, and it is also in close proximity to multiple extracts, then it can definitely be worth it, especially since you can usually just get into this area and then head to extract if you end up finding an item that you need. And then the best option in terms of consistency for these two stims, but at the same time, the least feasible for most players is the black room on labs. Obviously labs in general is not enjoyable for most of the player base and then the fact that the black card usually sells for over 4 million rubles on the flea market or you can always barter trade it from level 4 mechanic after completing gunsmith part 25 
but the barter trade actually does cost you just over 2 million rubles after you accumulate all of the items. So either way, it's not going to be cheap for you. However, if you do like to run labs, then this key can definitely pay itself off and is arguably the best key card to run on the map due to its consistency with stims and also possible lead spawns. Or your other option is that if you do have a friend who has the black card and then they can open up the room for you, then it's definitely worth running the map in order to get this task over with as soon as possible. You can even sometimes meet a nice labs player through VoIP who will gift you a found and raid stim that you need in order to finish this task. But try this at your own risk since usually labs boys are just as ruthless as they are cracked. And then lastly, I will give you guys a free option on labs being the med hut. And like I did say, this option is free. However, it is not nearly as consistent as the two rooms that require a key. The stim spawns in here are going to be on the left side of this big table and also on the right side of the sink at the back right corner. But this is an offline raid, so my loot pool is going to be nerfed into the ground. So that's probably why nothing had spawned in here for me. But I did figure that I would add this area in anyway for you guys to at least be aware of it and have an option that isn't going to cost you 400 plus K to get access. And there are actually several other stim spawns that are located all around labs, but if I was to go over all those, then it would make this video even longer than it already unfortunately is. So that was why I only focused on these three areas where the spawns are more so condensed. And I do also recommend that you guys check the backpacks of raiders that you kill because I did actually find an AHF-1 there this wipe. So hopefully you guys found this guide useful and it does help you to complete this task. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching the video. And if you're still here at the end, I definitely appreciate you. And I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is just a couple of my different social links in case you guys wanted to connect more easily. I am primarily streaming on Twitch now multiple nights a week. So if you do want to connect with me or my community, that would probably be the easiest way to do so. And if you do come over to the Twitch and you want to join the Discord community, then just type exclamation point Discord or Cord in the chat in order to get an invite link. And if you don't use Twitch, then I do have a link in the picture as well as a link below in the description and we are growing and currently have an active and welcoming community with people of all experience and skill levels so there will always be someone who could help to answer any questions that you may have as always thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching the video and i hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day